Sometimes you want to have a list of data, but you don't want items to repeat. And so you want the data to be unique inside of that list. That's known as a set. And so what we can do is create a, a set of values. So I can say set of, and this is a helper function inside of the Kotlin standard library and the Kotlin collections library. And I'm gonna create a set of names. So I say Don and let's say John and then Felicia. There we go. And I can print this out. Now, what this will do, this should be names. When I print this, it'll look almost similar to just like a list. We have Don, John, Felicia. That works well. But the benefit of a set is, if we look at the definition here of the set of helper method, return, returns a new read-only set with the given elements. Elements of the set are iterated in the order they are specified, and the return set is serializable. So we can serialize it. But the interesting thing is here, it only uh, does not allow duplicate elements. So if I want to put Don in there twice, and I run this, you'll see that Don is not in there. Let's see if I try to put Felicia twice, or John. So do John again. We see that it's not included. So we cannot put that inside of there. So with a set, you can't have duplicate items in there. And so that's how we can create a set that's basically a read-only set. If we want to create a mutable set, you would actually, which is a set you can change. And again, you could specify this uh, differently. This is also going to be known as a basically a set of string. That's the way you could do this. Set of string. Of course, this is not the helper method doesn't work this way, but that's what this is, is a set of string. If you want to create a mutable set of, you would do like this. And we don't need to provide the type parameters because they are inferred. If you want to add something, you just say names.add, use the add method. And here we're going to go ahead and say Jenny. And we'll go ahead and print line names. And when we print that again, we should now see Don, John, Felicia, and Jenny. Now what happens here if we try to add Don in? And let's go ahead and print it again. Now Don already exists in there. So if we run this and see what happens now, we'll see that Don is not added again. So the set is remaining unique. Each item in the set is unique. So this applies for if you're going to have your strings, your integers, etc. Each item in a set is unique. Okay, now let's take this a little bit further here. We've kind of understand what we can do for duplicate names here. If Don is up here twice, it's not going to show. But now what if we have a class? So we have an object. So an object should not have duplicate values in there for a set. Now, however, if I've added a person class here that just has a name, and then I add two people to this, two persons to this people set, we should technically only see one Don in there. Now, when we run this, we actually see two persons. And notice this little number here at the end. I'm not going to get into the details of what it is, but this basically is saying, look, these are different objects. And so the equality checks inside of here are not being done. Now, there's ways you can implement these equality checks inside of your classes with the equals and overriding uh, all the proper methods to uh, ensure equality inside of your classes. However, if these are just classes that are going to hold data, such as this one is, then what you can do is you can just turn this into a data class. And use this as a data class, it'll work the same way, but all these equality checks are already done for you. It's comparing all the fields, etc., to see if they're exactly the same. So now if we run this, I'm basically adding two Dons to the set of the same data class and say, nope, no, -uh, it's not gonna allow it. So I, I could I come up here and add another one. Say, no, I want to, no, I'm really sure I want to add Don three times. And what will happen is it'll come back and say, nope, there's only one. And so then I can actually maybe just change this one to, to you know, um, let's do this one is Janet. We'll run here. We'll see, all right, and there's Don, there's Janet inside of there. So there's the set is not allowing each uh, multiple different versions in here uh, of the different types of folks. Again, so you can have a mutable set. So this is very much a very kind of Kotlin specific idiom. You have immutable and mutable. By default, everything's immutable. So you need to think about this. If you want something to be mutable, you need to tell Kotlin, hey, this is a mutable list. This is a mutable map. This is a mutable set. And if you need it to be unique, like a list of data to be unique, then you should be using a set. And if you're going to be using classes, you want to make sure that the equality checks are implemented correctly in your given class or you're using a data class.